Yo, what's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome to the Alchemical Mindset. I am Renz, and welcome to America. Is all I can say is welcome to America. We're gonna going to right off the whip. I'm gonna I'm going to tell you. Yes, there was a shooting here in my hometown, Atlanta, Georgia, up in Cherokee County, where a white man once again in white terrorism goes into an Asian community. And shoots up three spas. Kills eight people. Now, his rationale, his reasoning was the fact that he said that he had a sex addiction. And that he was purging the temptation. When he was arrested without being killed. And I mean that sarcastically. The Cherokee County Sheriff's spokesperson said that. He had a lot going on, a lot of things build up, and he just had a bad day. A bad day. We all know that if he was a person of color, he would have immediately, one, he probably would have been shot killed, shot and killed. If he had went and shot up eight, three white spas that killed eight white people, white women, we know he would have died. He would not have been able to claim some addiction because what we do understand is that in white America, black people, Asian people, people of color, Spanish people, we can't have PTSD. We can't have mental illnesses. We can't have struggle and stress. We are just criminal by nature. You see, these are the results of the teachings of eugenics. Where in the early 1900s especially, it was taught in college campuses that people of color, the further you go down the color line from white people to Asians to Spanish and on down to black people from, African, from Africa, that we become less and less human. We become less and less uh, able to work in a civilized society that we are only getting by by the grace of being trained by those of a lighter hue. You see, there's a belief out there, whether in the front of people's minds or the back of their minds, that says that a, a, a white person could not have committed such a, an atrocity without there being some type of mental illness because we know that white means purity. White means that it's clean. White means that it, it has no 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 hindrance. That is good. And we know that they teach that black means that it's dark, it's ominous, it's tainted, it's stained, it's evil. We understand that that is what has promoted people to think, or prompted people to think that white is right and black is wrong. That there is something evil about anything black. Yet all creation came out of the darkness. Without the darkness, you wouldn't know the light. And I'll say without the light, you wouldn't know darkness either. But there's more dark energy out there. If we was able to harness dark energy, we would have more power in this world than we ever could imagine. It is not good nor bad. A color has a good or bad to it. This is a psychosis that we've created, which allows for this sheriff to say that he had a bad day. And I know that people have come out and they said that, well, we have to stop, not don't stop Asian hate. We need to stop white terrorism. And yes, on one hand, I can agree with that. I can agree with both. Stop Asian hate. Stop white terrorism. I understand both. Most of the people who say stop white hate instead of, I mean, stop white terrorism instead of Asian hate are the ones who look at black people and say, why is it that black people are always expected to come out hard for everyone else, but yet everyone else don't come out hard for black people? Now, I know some may go ahead and cite that the Black Lives Matter movement, that it was worldwide, that people came out from every culture. This is true, but that's a one time one time before that you'll have to go all the way back to the civil rights movement one time in 50 60 years it doesn't work and yes we've made athletes and entertainers in the black community those are our leaders and they 
kind of have to come out and say something with something when things like that happen. But because we've made these people our leaders, that's a problem. That's a problem. I don't know if I talk about it as much in this video, but I know in another one I definitely talk about the fact that. No, I'm gonna talk about it in this one. The fact that when you look up the Forbes rich, the top, the Forbes list of wealth, that other than one person, other than one person, the top five, six black people in America are entertainers or athletes. Sure, they've done other things, but their start was entertainment. Oprah start, entertainment. Tyler Perry start, entertainment. Kanye West, who is not the richest black man in America, start is entertainment. Everybody's start is entertainment or athleticism. This is what's hindering us. This is why our leadership is not the leadership that we need. And that is the problem. The problem is that we look to politicians for our leadership, but we're not going to find them there. We look at entertainers and athletes as our leaders. We're not going to find good leadership there. They, sure, they can do some good things, but they're not good leadership. We don't have leadership that comes out of academia, and we don't have leadership that comes out of the business world, which is the actual leadership that we need. It's the leadership out of the business world, not so much of academia. Nothing against academia. Go get your degree, do your thing, whatever. But the churches, nor academia, nor athletes, nor entertainers is where our leadership should come from. In today's world, our leadership must come from the business community. It has to. And everybody get behind that. Because the business community is the only way we're going to actually find our salvation in this country. You're not going to get it in your vote. You voted people in. What have they done for you lately? That's all I'm asking. I don't care if you voted for Biden, Trump. I don't care if you voted for Democrat, Republic. In your local community, what have they done for you? What has your politicians really done for you in the black community? Not too much. Let's be a little historical before I get into this point. When you look at the video I did about Uncle Tom's Cabin, if you pay attention, there's a portion where I talked about how um, the true gentleman, Mr. Henson, that, and Henson, he represented both the Sambo and the Uncle Tom character, both character he embodied. Now, of course, we are misusing the term Uncle Tom we're not using it correctly. It does not mean what y'all think it means. Go read the book. Go look at my video. and You'll understand. But when Mr. Henson thought that he can play the rules by the American rules in order for him to gain his freedom, he recognized that he was tricked, that he was lied to, that the way the system was uh, rigged, it was rigged against him. And until we realize that, that's when he decided to break the game and just leave and help others to leave. We will never, never gain our 14th Amendment rights in truth until we stop playing a game that's rigged against us. The Asian community, the Spanish community, the Indian community, and I call them, and let me, let me be clear, I'm separated, even though Indian people from India Bangladesh, all that area are considered, they are, they are Asian. I'm separating them as Indian, as, a, as the Indian culture. Because I'm not talking about the Native American. But the Indian culture, the Asian culture, the Spanish culture, they are playing the game the only way you are going to gain your 14th Amendment rights here in America. Marching, Voting, protesting, violence is not going to get you your 14th Amendment rights. If you don't know what your 14th Amendment rights, you really should know them. They're the most important rights that you can possibly have in this country. The 14th Amendment basically guarantees you as a person, I didn't say citizen, as a person in the jurisdiction of America, meaning you are in the land of America, of the United States, that every person is guaranteed equal rights and protection under the law. That you're guaranteed due process under the law. But we know we don't get this. 
We don't get equal protection. We don't get due process. America is not fair to people of color. We know this. We know it also talks about you are naturally born a citizen in America, but we know there are those who try to get rid of that, disrupt that. So how do we get equal protection under the law? Well, people like to say, talk about how. We have to change the minds of the white person. We have to change the minds of America. We have to be patient. Those who want us to be patient. Change the minds of American people. Get the American people to understand. I used to be one that, and I still would suggest, there's a lot of answers here. Let me be clear first of all. There's a lot of answers, but I'm going to give you the primary thing that we must start with, and then we can do the other things. Yes, I live here in Georgia. My store is where I'm at is really, is right near Stone Mountain, which has... Lee, General Lee Boulevard Street, whatever it is. It has the Confederacy up on the mountain. Yes, we are honoring those who lost a war to maintain slavery. We are honoring them. And as long as we honor them as heroes who fought for their heritage and privilege of having slaves, then we will never change the mind. We will never change the mind. But it is not the mind of the white oppressive person that we need to change. It is your mind that we need to change. Your mind as a community has to change. You see, the Asian community's mind is different than the black community's mind simply because, one, the Asian has a home country that they have a cultural basis, that they have no matter how they feel about it. When the Chinese came to America, they came to America is looking for a gold rush, looking for opportunity, but they still maintain their cultural heritage, their connection to China. They still had that. When Mexicans come across into America, they still hold on to their culture. This is why you can go, and here in Atlanta, if you drive up Buford Highway, it goes from American styles to Spanish. No, it goes American style to Asian. Uh, generally, that first Asian grouping is Vietnamese. Then it goes into Korean. Then it goes into um, the Spanish community. Then it goes back into a Vietnamese community, Chinese community, and then Korean community. And then it goes back into like an American community. That street, they are, and I'm talking about for miles. There might be one mile, two mile, where it's indicative of one culture. In America, in black America, we may have a block that's Jamaican, a block that's African, a block that's black. But in the mix of all that, we have Asian businesses, we have Caucasian businesses, we have everybody else's business that we will support over our own. More, more times over, we will. But it is a statement that said that something to the effect, we cannot, we will not win this thing if we are concerned about how other people treat us. But we must win this thing by how we treat ourselves. That's the key. How we treat ourselves, how we maintain our own communities, how we build our own community, develop our connections. We, as black Americans, have to create and develop our connection. You got black people on this side fighting. We were already here. We were Native Americans. Sure, go to the Sioux and see if they'll let you become part of their tribe. Go to the Cherokee, see if they let you become part of their tribe. If they do, great. And then be, be one of them. But up here yelling about we ain't from here and because you have an embarrassment about slavery, that's because you believe our history starts with slavery. You don't know about our Mali Empire history. You don't know about our Zulu history, our Ashanti history, our Ethiopian history, our Egyptian history. You know, you don't know about our, you know, Congolese history. You don't know about our true history, our full history. The black history of the black man didn't start with slavery. But even if you say we are from here, then you then have to go with the, you know, Barren Strait migration, the Ice Age migration, which then comes from, then you have to say you're Chinese, and then from the Chinese, you have to say that you're East African. Either way, you're coming from Africa. The point is that in today's world, you're not connecting to the Native American tribes that have been set up, your Creek Indians, you're the Seminoles, they're not letting you in. They're not. They might let one or two of you in just to make it look good, but they're not letting you in. 
But what you can connect to is Pan-Africanism. What you can connect to is the fact that the president of Ghana, who just kicked out the Europeans and saying that we're not, you're not taking our cocoa no more. You're not taking our gold no more. We're going to refine and manufacture our own stuff and you can buy Guyanese chocolate. You can buy gold from Ghana. You Ghana, you ain't, you're, you're not raping us of our natural raw resources and then selling it back to us three, four times the price. We can connect with Rwanda and Kigali where if you're an IT person, you're looking for a great start, go to Kigali. It's a beautiful, wonderful opportunity for you to build something. You know, we have to realize that we need to establish our connections to these places and develop our culture. And in developing our culture, we will gain more pride within ourselves. We will gain a disconnect where we depend on somebody's vote. You never really hear Asian people screaming about the vote. Spanish people really screaming about the vote. What you see them doing is building financial hubs of communities. And in those financial hubs of communities is how they have power. It's why they are respected. Black people got all up in their arms because Biden said that his first, he, he was talking about, oh yeah, black people, black people. But then once he got in office, he said his first priority is the transgender community. And what have you seen? Y'all pissed, y'all mad, right? Because that's what he said. Why? Because the transgender gay community has money, has power. But I digress. Black America, we must realize that the only way we will ever truly receive freedom in this country is when we are of a mindset where we don't require the government to do anything for us. You see, if a president was actually smart, I would quell the whole reparations conversation real simple, real quick, real easy. Real easy. You know, it was said once that if all the wealth in America was spread out evenly amongst all the people in America, that within 10 years, probably five now, but within 10 years, all the money would return back to the 10% and the 1%. All of it. We'll return back to the 10% and the 1%. The 90% that they control. It'd be back into the hands of rich. We'd be right back to the class divisions that we have now. Think about it. The French Revolution happened and all the wealth was dispersed, but the aristocrats still was able to regain territories and land owning and government control, all of these things. Anytime something like that happens, those who know how to make money will always get it back. And that's what would happen with reparations. Right now, if you gave, say, $200,000 to everyone of African descent, now I bet you a lot of those people claim they're Native American will switch over. If you gave $200,000, just a good number, 300, three, 30 million black people in America, if you gave each household, or each adult, $200,000, I guarantee that only 10% would maintain and create wealth based on that 200,000. If you gave them three, if you gave all of us 300, 400, 500,000, 500,000 for 30 million people will probably bankrupt the government. But if you did 200,000, which will probably still hinder the government for a while, let's say we go into a recession, but only 10% of those people, of the people who receive that money would actually go and buy like a house that they can still maintain. Some will buy houses paid for outright. Most who buy a home will say, I got a $200,000 down payment. I'm going to go buy me a $700,000 home. So now I got a mortgage that's $500,000. But yet their job really can't afford that, that amount. You really can't. But they'll go do it. And they'll lose the house or the next generation will lose the house simply because they do not know how to, they didn't teach how to maintain and build wealth. A lot of people will go out and buy cars, something that has no value after it's purchased. The value decreases after it's purchased. Many will go buy clothes, many will pay bills, many will go party, many will go buy stuff, a brand name, this and that, just so that they can have it. Most people will waste the money and it'll be right back into the hands of the Gucci's, the hands of the banks, the hands of the realtors, the hands of the 
uh, Maserati dealerships, it'll go right back into the hands of those who are already wealthy. And then after it's given, black America can't scream reparations ever again. Ever again. For the rest of the history of America, you can't say it. You can't claim it. You can't scream for it. So now, whose fault is it if you don't rise up? Well, it's your fault. So I say this. Yes. After the Civil War and the 13th Amendment that freed all the slaves in America, for the next four years, black Americans thrived. The former slaves thrived. They took over. They owned land. They owned homes. They owned businesses. They, they took leadership positions in, in the government. Yes, they did. But then, Southern Reconstruction became Southern Deconstruction. Movies like Birth of a Nation, the white one, uh, inspired white people in the South to fight a different kind of war. In the same sense that after World War II, the Japanese said that they are now fighting, slight interruption, but the Japanese, Ameri the Japanese said that the war is not over. They began to fight an economic war against America. The same thing happened after deconstruction, well, reconstruction, is that they began a plan of deconstruction. We're not going to allow black people to rise up. Yes, we see they're taking government positions. We see they are owning land and businesses, but what we got to do is deconstruct that. We cannot allow them to gain pride. We cannot allow them to gain position. So deconstruction began. It began with lynchings. It began with burnings. It began with bombing of communities. And it continued up to the gym and it turned into Jim Crow. Where the 14th Amendment was in place and we were supposed to have citizenship. But then Jim Crow. And with Jim Crow, with the uh, other acts that prevented the Chinese from being able to grow in America, black people were deconstructed. We were told that our history had no pride. We were told that our history started in slavery. We were told that we, we, eugenics came out and we were told that black people are subhuman, that they, they don't have the capabilities to become smarter. We were denied education. We were denied opportunities and things were not fair and equal. They were very unequal. And we created within our own communities our own deconstruction. We allowed entertainers and athletes to become our leaders. We allowed for a horrible term like nigga to become part of our lexicon that describes us in a friendly manner. When we should have never allowed that word to describe us. Before that word described us, we called each other brothers and sisters. And I am hopeful that today as we call each other brothers and sis and king and queen, that this word that was popularized by an athlete and an entertainer that it dies off. That we realize that it is a deconstructive word no matter how you twist it, turn it, pull it, and try to make love to it. It is not something that ever will humanize black Americans. But yet, we've allowed our own internal turmoil to cause this. Yeah, it started on the outside, but then we took over. Well, we can still take over. We can change that. And we change that by truly identifying like how we treat ourselves. I cannot treat myself horribly if I love myself. I cannot cause myself to not grow economically if I believe and know that I can be that next billionaire that comes from business and not entertainment or um, athleticism. I first must believe in myself and then take care of my family and those around me. Do not be fooled into thinking that black people don't help black people. I'm getting ready to open up a cigar lounge three doors down from my current business. Every black cigar bar lounge owner that I have talked to, management that I have talked to, have been extremely helpful. Extremely helpful. Very supportive. I just watched four brothers open up a cigar lounge together. Before that, there were three brothers who opened up a cigar lounge together. Sisters who have opened up cigar lounges together. This myth that black people are like crabs in a bucket or pulling each other down is a myth that you propagate yourself. Sure, 
we can complain about bad customer service. You think white people don't complain about bad customer service at white businesses? That Asian people don't complain about bad customer service at Asian businesses? You're just not in the preview of it. You're just a purview. You're just not there to hear it. You just don't see it because you're locked into the narrow view of your community. Sure, an Asian business doesn't advertise and makes money in the black community. But that same type Asian business goes out of business in their own community. You go into the, the, the Asian Spanish community, you'll see businesses close down. The reason why one doesn't close down in your community, in the black community, is because it might be the only one or one of two or three and three of everything can survive in any community. It's only a couple. But when you go into their community and there's 15, 20 Chinese restaurants, 15, 20 sushi bars, 15, 20 taquerias, guess what? A lot of them are going out of business. Just like in your community, a lot of soul food restaurants may go out of business because there's too many. A lot of barbershops may go out of business because there's too many. A lot of salons may go out of business because there's too many. You got to gotta understand how business works. And when we understand how business works, and we start doing business in America, we start doing business in Africa, we start doing business in the Caribbean, we start doing business in South America, we start doing business with other black countries that are controlled by black people, we will become less and less dependent upon what America thinks of and thinks about us. And then at that point, when we don't care what they think, we may start to take control. We begin to buy our communities. We begin to own all the businesses in our community. We begin to truly have the 14th Amendment rights of every person who is protected and has a right of due process because now the police force has to listen to you in that community. The, the politician has to listen to you in that community and do what's best for you and not someone else. The sooner we realize this, then we'll have our solution. Stop caring about how somebody else thinks about us or treats us. We have to first demand the respect from ourselves. When we demand that respect from ourselves and then act it out in wisdom, we will then be able to grow and define who we are, what we are about, and how we will be treated because we'll have the power to do so. And that's what, it, that's what matters. That's the solution. And of course, all the other things will come after that. They'll come after that. Other people's minds will change after that. The laws will be, uh, hell, they don't need to be added. The laws will just be enforced after that. After that, we will then have equality. And white America, we're not trying to take anything from you. We just want the same thing you got. The same equal opportunity to prove how unequal we are, the same equal opportunity of due process, the same equal opportunity of being treated like a person. We just want the same thing that you got, the same thing, and an opportunity to build our families and take care of them. It's the same thing. And if you are against that, then maybe eugenics is in reverse and maybe you are not as human as you think you are. Y'all have a great day. Remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good vibrations. Good journey.